seven seven. Unbelievable. second at bat here in the fourth. We would like to welcome those of you who have been watching the Houston Astros and the Cincinnati Reds on our FX cable channel as Matt McGuire looks on wondering if this is the at bat Tuesday September 8th that Mark McGuire moves one place in front of Roger Maris. his last at bat of 1998. But take a good long look. This is going to have to last you until next March in Florida. First and third, two out. Oh. In the left field, number 70. How much more can you give us, Big Mac? Number 70. Two, two, time bottom of the ninth inning. Game five. Smith corks one into right down the line. It may go. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. It's a home run, and the Cardinals have won the game by the score of three to two. He is going. The pitch is a strike. The throw. He is there. He did it. 105 for Lubra. Takes a good lead, a big lead. Reislevin looks. He's going. The pitch is high. The throw is safe. He stole it. The throw got by the shortstop, and Brock has done it. They would have thrown him out, but the shortstop couldn't handle the bad throw. And this is it, folks. Brock has now scored. 893. All of his teammates out of the dugout, onto the field, and all of the reporters, newspaper people, photographers on the field, much reminiscent of the night he broke Maury Will's record. A 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball. Hit off the pitcher. To the third baseman. No play. Base hit. 3,000 for Lubrock. Typical of the man, Jack. He's knocked down on the pitch before, and then he turns around and hits a line drive off the pitch and knocks him down. And the has a ballpark. 
Suter from the belt to the plate. A swing and a miss, and that's a winner! That's a winner! A World Series winner for the Cardinals! Porter throws his mask into the air. The players converge around the mound. The Cardinals have won the game. For the first time since 1982, St. Louis has a World Series winner. Ames uh, will be relieved, and I can't tell who's going to come in. It is going to be Grover Cleveland Alexander. Oh, Pete will come on. Again, the runners take their long two-out bases loaded lead. He pitches. One on and it's for strike three. And that is all for the New York Yankees in the last half of the seventh inning as all Pete comes in in a situation that will go down as one of the most dramatic moments in all sports and strikes out, push him up, Lazari with the bases full. 11 and nothing. One ball, two strikes, a no-hitter. Here's the pitch. Strike three, he got it. The pitch coming, a swing and a miss. He struck him out. And that's 3,000 for Bob Gibson. Now, one out from victory, Gibson makes a supreme effort, and Scott strikes out. The Cardinals win. They're the new world champions. And Bob Gibson, with his third victory, has brought them through in the decisive seventh game, even as he did in 1964 against the New York Yankees. Now, now, five of the first six men he's played. Nine strikeouts for Bob Gibson. That's number 10. The 11th strikeout. That is number 14. Got him! Listen to the crowd! With his 15th strikeout. Yeah! Once again, a standing ovation. A new World Series record. McCarver, the first one. Now his infielders all over him. A new world's record of 17 strikeouts in one game. This brings up Harry Walker, a timely hitter during the series. Slaughter is off with the pitch. Walker swings and lines a double to left center. Slaughter kept on going, rounding third base at full speed, scoring all the way from first. When the relay throw from Johnny Pesky reached home too late for a play on Slaughter. This important run put the Cardinals out in front by a score of four to three. There goes a screwball pitch. McBride grounds to Shane Beast, and Higgins is forced out at second to end the ball game with the St. Louis Cardinals winning the seventh and final game of the 1946 World Series by a score of four to three. Chartak batted for catcher Hayworth, and Wilkes, who did a fine job as relief pitcher for Lanier, struck him out ending the sixth and final game of the series by a score of three to one. The jubilant Cardinals mob Ted Wilkes. This victory brought them the World Series title, four games to two in the first all St. Louis series. But Bob Gibson bears down on Bobby Richardson. Gibson gets Bobby to pop out, and for the first time since 1946, the St. Louis Cardinals win the World Series, a series that will be replayed time and again through the long, cold winter.